All praise is due to Allah. We ask Allah to exalt the mention, grant peace, and send His blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his companions, his wives, and all those who follow them on their path of righteousness until the end of time. Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to our new episode. Yet a continuation of our previous discussion on marriage. Uh, we have with us today uh, Brother Abdurrahim Green, Brother Salim Al-Amri, and Brother Asim Al-Hakim. I'm your host, Abu Mus'ab Wajdi Akari. So, reproduction. It's a very uh, heavy term and has many connotations. And uh, that's one of the things which we did not elaborate on yet. And perhaps, uh, Sheikh Asim, you could begin by elaborating somewhat on the idea of reproduction in Islam, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillahi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa tada bihuda, amma ba'd. Reproduction is encouraged not only in Islam, and we're not talking about reproduction of cars or of movies, or we're not in Bollywood. We're talking about having children, having offspring. We've stated that this is the sunnah of the prophets and messengers of Allah. And Allah mentioned this in the Quran, that they had offsprings. We mentioned also that the Prophet ﷺ encouraged the ummah, not only individuals, he encouraged the ummah to reproduce. In the hadith of Ma'qal ibn Yasar, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said that, O Prophet of Allah, I found a woman who is of noble lineage and she's beautiful, but she does not bear children. So can I marry her? And the answer was negative. So the man asked the Prophet again, and the Prophet said no. And the man asked the Prophet for the third time, insisting, come on, this is a catch. She is of noble lineage, she is rich, she is beautiful. What can a man ask for more? But she does not bear children, which means that she was divorced uh, and she could not bear children and the prophet again said no marry those women who are fertile and loving and caring for i will boast with your numbers on the day of judgment is this the advice of the prophet or is this a, a prohibition from him well, it's a good thing that you've asked because... Because there might be some yes, sisters out yes, there yes, thinking, yes. okay, this is harsh for me. The hadith mm. relates to someone who was not married before, who has no children. But no one in Islam says that it is prohibited to marry a woman who does not bear children. Mm. No one says it's prohibited. If you do not have children yourself, it becomes not recommended. Mm. But if you have children, definitely, as a recommendation, yes, you can go and marry someone who is... So, I mean, the emphasis of the hadith here is... To multiply. Is to, yeah. Yes, and that the Prophet stated this in a very eloquent way. Marry the woman who's fertile and loving and caring, not only fertile. The issue is not in reproduction alone. It's a long-term mm. yes. relationship. Yeah, you marry not only to reproduce, mm. but to have a sustainable and beautiful life with your spouse. This reminds me of another hadith when the Prophet Sallallahu on the night of ascension, when he saw the great multitude of people, the crowd, and he thought that was his ummah. They told him, no, this is Moses and Bani Israel. But look to the horizon. The whole horizon is covered. You can't see. That is your ummah. So the ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu is going to outnumber all the nations on the day of resurrection. So, so this wish of the Prophet ﷺ has been fulfilled and will be fulfilled inshallah. but every Muslim should try to fulfill this wish for the Prophet ﷺ. There's usually fear of being able to afford it, seriously. Is there an ayah or are there some references from the Quran which address this issue in regards to the people who worry about uh, financial uh, you know, obligations? There is and this issue, provision. So, subhanAllah, the Arabs before Islam used to kill their children out of the fear of poverty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed regarding that. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقِ They are two ayah. مِنْ إِمْلَاقِ نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ The other ayah. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشْيَةَ إِمْلَاقِ نَحْنُ نَرْزُقَهُمْ 
وإياكم. See the beautiful and the about these two ayat. The first ayah, ولا تقتلوا أولادكم. Do not kill your children. من إملاق. Because of poverty. Poverty exists. نحن نرزقكم. We provide you. And he mentioned the parents first. Because the human being is selfish by nature. So I want to survive. Let the child die. No problem. This is the nature. So Allah addresses this. He said, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ We'll provide for you and as well for your children. Mm -hmm. Then the other ayah is addressing the whole issue from a different angle. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقِ Allah is calling it killing. Killing. This one is من خشية. خشية Out of the fear. You have money now, but maybe in the future I will become poor. So Allah is saying no. وَلَا تَقْتُلَ أُولَادَكُمْ خَشْيَةَ إِمْلَاقِ Out of fear of poverty. نَحْنُ نَرْزُقَهُمْ We provide them, the children, as if the child comes along with his, he brings his risk with him. So, we Muslims, we should not think or get worried about the issue of the risk and the issue of your lifespan, your life. Two things they worry a human being. Death and provision. And these two things are in Allah's hand. I think it's quite interesting as well, Shaykh. These are in Allah's hand. And Allah, because He knows that many of us are doubtful, He gave us the assurance. وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُعَدُونَ This is enough. In heavens, in the skies, or in the clouds, is your risk. And whatever is promised. This is enough. But Allah then gave more assurance. فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Allah is swearing by Himself, by the Lord of the heavens and the earth, إِنَّهُ لَحَقُ It is the truth. مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْتَقُونَ In the way that you articulate, the way you utter. You are sure when you are talking that you are talking. There is no doubt. So, your rizq has been guaranteed when you are still a speakable drop of semen in your mother's womb. First of all, I would like to point out that Actually, this, uh, the idea that we are so overpopulated we can't feed everybody is a myth. There is plenty of food. In England, just England alone, we throw away enough food in a year to feed the whole of Africa. Wow. In England alone, we feed enough food in a year to feed the whole of Africa. This is what Gordon Brown, the, prior, the former Prime Minister, was saying. This, I mean, and then we say we don't have enough food to, to feed. It's not a problem of there's not enough food. It's a problem of justice and distribution and many other issues. Um, and I think so it's not only a personal issue. People feel, you know, personally, but also collectively there's this paranoia that, uh, oh, how will we feed the human beings? No, the provision is there. It's not that the provision is not there. there. It's just that we human beings not, are not distributing it really equitably. And I think the other thing about kids that we think we should talk about is just the, you know, the ajr, the benefit of having kids. Because this is still, for me, one of the great benefits. You know, there's a psychological benefit. You talked about when you come home and, mashallah, you see your wife, yeah? Um, but before I see my wife, myself personally, before I even get to see my wife, I have to go through the kids. And, but for me, this is the thing. The moment I open the door, it's like, Abba! And literally, they scream, you know? Especially the little ones, and they come running. And you know, it's the, for me, this is my sunshine. You know, the whole day could be so stressed, and I see those kids, you know? And mashallah, all the worries, they just go, and I'm just smiling, and you know, playing with them, and this is just fantastic. And, and so there's that just beautiful thing about marriage, as well as the, the rewards, because this is maybe, Allahu A'la, one of the most amazing things about marriage in terms of the benefit. Because every child you have, you teach them Salah, you teach them Qur'an, you bring them up in Islam, you get rewarded for all the good things they do without their reward being taken away. And then when you die, they are making dua for you. They can do other things for you. And so, mashallah, the Shaykh, the hadith, you, if you'd like to quote it on that, something only benefits the... Yes, yeah, sir. but the hadith of the three, the yes. three daughters, as one has three daughters, that is, takes him to the Jannah. Mashallah. You have three daughters and you bring them up uh, Islamically and you take care of them. 
That's the guarantee for you? And two. And two. And two. And the companion said, if the Prophet said, would have said one, he would have said, yes. Yes. And with the grace of Allah, I have 13 of them. So I hope, inshallah, that I will be protected from that. The girl, especially, but generally your offspring, is a comfort to the heart. And this feeling, I remember when I got married ages ago, I had my first daughter, and I said, I used to say to my wife, well, I remember it as if it's yesterday, subhanAllah. That when will the time come when my little infant child will grow up to be six or seven years of age, and whenever I come to the house, she'll take my bag and, and hugs me and, and, and cuddles me. And that was yesterday. Mm. Now my daughter, mashallah, she's doing her master's in Islamic studies in the University of Medina, mm. mashallah. And she has two children of her own, Your yet she daughter. still is the love of her, of her daddy. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. And it's a, it's a great blessing. Mm. But not only that, the hadith you were referring to, the Prophet mm. said, والسلام, when the son of Adam dies, and yani, uh, Abu Mus'ab knows this hadith, we can go on. I, perhaps it would be uh, advisable if we d address it after the break. We can have a short break, and just so we can give it its due right, uh, inshallah ta'ala, just after the break. So uh, stick around, we'll be back soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. A way of life, a way of life, life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Yes, uh, you were going to say something and I, about a hadith, and I had to interrupt you, so uh, please go ahead. We know that our cause, reason for being on this earth is to worship Allah Azza wa and eventually either go to paradise or to hell. May Allah Azza wa prevent us all from, and the viewers from going to hell. Amen. So, one would assume that it would be normal and logical to do everything that gets you closer to paradise and as far as possible from hell. One of the reasons for getting you closer to paradise is to have good children. And if you have one, the possibility is less than when you have 10, for example. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ tells us that when the son of Adam dies, his good deeds are interrupted, are over. Because he's not able to pray, he's not able to fast, except of three things. The Prophet tells us, salam, a continuous charity, sadaqatun jariya, like digging a well, building a masjid, supporting a TV channel, Islamic that is, huh? Islamic TV channel, um, printing a book. This is part of the thing that people would circulate among them. Then the Prophet says, Knowledge, a form of science that people who come after you will benefit from. So we pray to Allah that our discussion here is one of that. And this is one of the greatest motives for us to have as many. Because we know that when we are in our graves and people are watching it, not only they have a laugh, but inshallah they'll benefit out of it. And this is the reason that drives us to do it. And thirdly, the Prophet says, a righteous offspring of his, whether boy or girl, because walad in Arabic refers to both genders. Hmm. That supplicates to him. Now, if you don't have children intentionally, you don't want them, and you're working not to have them, you'll miss this great branch of good deeds and reward. If you are tested by Allah not to have them, this is from Allah, Allah Azza wa will reward you if you have the intention to have children for this reason. And the more you have children, the better it is. And for the one who Allah decrees is barren, then the, the person should understand the ayah very well. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ اللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Perhaps you may hate something and it is good for you. Perhaps you may love something and it is evil for you. And Allah knows and you know not. So these issues, because sometimes they create a problem in aqeedah, we have to understand that for that particular individual, it's mercy from Allah that they don't have children. And for that other individual, it's mercy from Allah that they have children. Allah knows and we know not. And it's a test. No, ultimately. And that is why having a lot of children 
is beneficial because there, as Shah Abdul Rahim mentioned, Akhi, imagine that your children, you taught them, and this is what one of the scholars emphasizes on. He said, whenever your child is growing, be the most careful person to be the first one to teach him the Fatiha. Why is that? He says, because from now on, every time he recites the Fatiha in his prayer, you'll get the reward. Unfortunately, I'm the first one to neglect this because I depend on my wife who is more capable of teaching them and she has a more patience and tolerance. And this is one of the advantages of choosing a righteous and practicing woman because she does everything for you. And sometimes she gives you more than what you ask for. So like Brother Abraham said, imagine these children of yours, whenever they pray, you've spent so many long years, as you old parents know, waking them up for Fajr. And it is horrendous. But at the end of the day, look at the fruits. They pray Fajr on their own. They pray Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. They offer voluntary uh, nawafil prayers. They fast. They do this. All of this because you taught them this. Well, there are other issues which we wanted to address as well in terms of the benefits. And we also promised the viewers that we will be dealing with uh, some of the rights of the husband and the rights of the wife and uh, things of the sort. So um, are there any additional points in regards to the benefits of marriage that you wish to tackle now? Or shall we go ahead and move on to the interesting topic of what does the husband get out of this and what does the wife get out of this and are we actually fulfilling each other's uh, the duties towards each other or do we have some shortcomings? Uh, but I think that we should address, and, and I'd like the feedback of the brothers, of course, and yours as well. We always get this negative impression that the Muslims are overpopulated and they are focusing on quantity rather than quality. So, and I've heard this from so many people, you know, criticizing me from my relatives. They say you have so many kids, you're not taking care of them, you don't even know their names, and this is not true. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But they criticize the fact that we have so many kids. And they say, instead of having so many of them, have one or two, but work hard on making them in a good quality like fashion. So, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, and I don't know if you have. I, I many times. I get this uh, many, many times, uh, especially from mostly from my non-Muslim mother. She keeps bringing this topic up again and again. Sheikh, I found uh, actually the opposite is the case. Um, I found that having many kids in the house actually increases the quality. I don't find academically or spiritually or even financially. I, I don't notice this deficiency at all. In fact, what I've noticed is, mashallah, the kids are generally very happy in a way that I have not seen. I said to my mother, I'll ask you one question. I said, did you see a, ham a family as happy as our family? And she didn't know what to say, because you find anyone who comes to my house, you see the kids, they're all playing with each other, they're all sitting, teaching each other, so the big ones yeah, teach yeah. the little ones, they all... It's a really beautiful, it's school, a nice school, not a school, a school without <laughs> the bad things. So, I mean, the, this idea of, you know, quality, not quantity, actually you find that often kids in small families, they get lonely, uh, they have many problems. Uh, that you don't find in bigger families. I don't know if there's uh, any hard and fast rule, but this is my personal experience. Uh, what's your experience, Sheikh? There are facts in life, I mean, for example, I recall now that uh, in our family, I mean, the, the parents, they are illiterate. And their children, they were scoring the highest mark over the country. Okay? And, mashallah, they are doing well in their life. So this is, has nothing to, I mean, they are illiterate, they don't know anything, okay? So it is relevant and we should not be, I mean, intellectually brainwashed and accept and buy such a stuff. These things are quality, quantity, resources are limited. No, because Allah is the provider, we Muslims believe, as Sheikh mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this plan is sufficient food. Yes, there is a famine in this area or that area. But what is the main reason? It is a test for those who are well off. They should. It is the greed. At the same time, you see, they are dumping 
millions of tons yes. every year into the ocean to maintain the price of the wheat. And then they say there is poverty and... There's, there's another interesting thing, I don't want to spend too long on it, but I think every, you know, the viewers might be interested about this topic, that in Europe they have adopted, not as a policy, just as their culture, to have one or two kids. Now, the, it's actually become a very big problem economically. Because if you think about it statistically, you need more children in order to fill the future generation so that there are people working and so that they will be able to support those people who are now young when they get older. So you need a constant renewal and you need, it's not, you need to have more than two children because if you have two or less than two, it's not enough to renew. So basically what economists have figured out is that if, I think it's about something like this, if 35% of your population reaches the age, retirement age of 65, your, the economy of your country is no longer viable. You, your, your economy will not be able to sustain itself. And it's very interesting that in Italy and in many Norwegian countries, this is exactly the problem that Germany. they have. Germany is exactly that. The people are refusing to have more than one or two kids. They're refusing. Because why? In the West now, they have indoctrinated everybody that if you're a woman, you have lots of children, you're a mother, you're a housewife, you're a slave, you're a... You know, and all for what? Don't, I don't, no one should be imagining that this is for the liberation of women. No, that's rubbish and that's lies. It's economic. All they thought is, we've got half the population not working, not contributing taxes, not buying and selling. Let's get them into the workplace. They can earn money and we'll be richer as a nation. This is what it's about. But they didn't think ahead and think, oh, if the women are all working and don't have kids, what's going to happen to the future? Retirement age used to be 60. And this is why. This is, the why. this is the reason why. Okay, because this is the only way they're fighting. And England is one of the countries that doesn't have a problem because we have a lot of immigration. But the countries that don't, can't keep up with the immigration, their economies are on the verge of collapsing. But they'll never say this because it exposes the falsehood of their ideology. Zakumullah khair for the input. Uh, this will not be the end. Inshallah, there will be more episodes pertaining to marriage and issues of marriage and children in particular. Zakumullah khair for tuning in. And we hope to see you or we hope that you see us in the near future.